Imagine you went out and bought a brand new car for $100,000. Would you get insurance? What type and what value would you insure it for? Easy, right? Yes, you'd insure it, you'd get comprehensive car insurance and you'd insure it for what it's worth, $100,000. And it doesn't matter if your car is worth $20,000 or $100,000, you get insurance, most people do. But you know what's more valuable than the car? The person driving the car. Yet most people don't insure themselves properly. You have a car accident and you break your back, the car is fine, but you might be living on a reduced income for the rest of your life. So in this video, I'm explaining human insurance. I'll go through the different types of human insurances, how much you need, we'll talk about the insurance you have in super, and a way you may be able to get up to 40% off your premiums. Now, insurance can be a complicated topic, so I'm going to do my best to cover a lot in a short period of time. If it all gets too hard and you just want someone to sort it out for you, jump on our website. We've got an insurance needs analysis calculator. You can request a quote. Uh, you can book in a phone or a video meeting with myself. You don't even have to watch the video, so just, you know, skip it. Before I start, this is one of the videos in our superannuation series. So check out some of the other videos on our channel. Uh, the next one coming up is how to buy your first property using your super. Here's a general advice warning and time to talk insurance, human insurance. Look, this is what I call them so that we're thinking about them appropriately. You may have heard other people, financial advisors, insurance companies, or your super funds talk about wealth protection, or they might just use life insurance as a broad term. And I think this completely misses the point. If I asked a client or a friend, uh, do you need wealth protection? Wealth protection? But I don't have any wealth. Oh, so life insurance. Do you need life insurance? Ah, when you're dead, you're dead. You can't take it with you. Human insurance is about living your life. And if something unexpected does happen, it can minimize the financial impact on you and your family, help you maintain your current lifestyle, stop you from going into financial debt, or having to do something like drastic, like selling the family home, or even worse, moving back in with your parents. Oh my no, God! No, God, please, no, no, no! No! Now, I thought I'd tell a little story to explain the different types of insurances available and the concept around how much you might need. This is Ian, Tim, and Larry. They're all 30 years old, they all make $60,000 per year, and they are on holidays in Thailand. They're having a great time, it's Larry's bucks party, the drinks are flowing, and they decide to jump in an Uber to head into town. Unfortunately, Along the way, there was a bit of an incident with an elephant, a tuk-tuk, and another car, and their Uber crashes. In the accident, Ian broke his arm. He hit his head pretty bad, and for the next two years, he had headaches, he couldn't focus, and he couldn't look at a computer screen. So he couldn't work for the following two years. Two years of lost income will cost him $120,000. So for Ian's financial life not to be affected too badly by this accident, he would need income protection. Income protection is for temporary illness and injury. And there are three components to uh, income protection. So you've got the cover amount, which is how much the insurance company will pay Ian per month. The benefit period, which is how long the insurance company will continue to pay Ian. And the waiting period, which is how long Ian needs to be off work before the insurance company starts the payout. Next, we have Tim. His injuries were more severe, and unfortunately, he broke his back in the accident, and he would never walk again. Tim is permanently disabled. At the age of 30, he was going to work until he was 65. Tim's just lost 35 years of income, and at $60,000 per year, that's $2.1 million he won't earn for the rest of his life. For Tim's financial future not to be affected, he would need to have Total and Permanent Disability, or TPD. This pays out a lump sum if you're permanently disabled. Now, does Tim need the full $2.1 million of cover? Probably not. This is where we need to do an insurance analysis. Uh, 
as I was saying, we have one available on our website um, that you can use, but here are some things that you might want to consider if you're doing it on your own. The first thing to consider is investment returns. If you get a payout from an insurance company, well, you can invest that money. Remember, Tim's goal was $60,000 per year. A million dollars invested at 6% will give you the 60 grand per year, or 1.5 million at 4% would pay him $60,000 per year. Uh, so consider investment returns when uh, you are thinking about this number. The next is, do you need 100% of your income? It's common for people to tell me, look, if my mortgage is paid off, well, I don't need all of my income to live comfortably. Um, so you could consider what you need rather than what you earn. Also, do you have other assets like your superannuation or investment properties that should be considered? You also want to add a few buffers in there as well. So medical expenses or life changes. Like if you did break your back, would you need to, I don't know, upgrade your house and add ramps? You know, we can never really know exactly what's going to happen. Um, I guess I'm just saying don't make your calculations too tight. As a guide, I'm going to say someone like Tim's situation would need somewhere between $600,000 and $1 million worth of TPD. And lastly, poor Larry. On his bucks, Larry wasn't wearing a seatbelt and passed away at the scene. In this case, Larry would need life insurance to not affect his financial future. But hang on a second, Larry doesn't have a financial future, so why would he need cover? My first question would be, was somebody else depending on Larry's income? Like, if Larry uh, had a wife and kids, maybe they need his 35 years of income, or just until the, the youngest turns 18. For both life and TPD, also consider future events. Like, maybe you wanna pay for the kids' private school fees or uni fees, um, you know, I meet a lot of people who might say, hey, if something goes wrong, we want a big chunk of money to go on a massive holiday. Um, so just think about the future and what you may want. A big question I get is from people who don't have kids yet, and they don't have a mortgage, and they're asking, why do I need life insurance? And you may not. You may decide not to have it. If you're going to get TPD insurance, the additional cost to have life insurance usually isn't very much. And the younger and healthier you are, the cheaper insurance can be. So sometimes sorting out your insurance is sooner the better. Ultimately, it's your decision. For Larry, I'm going to go again with the guide of $600,000 to a million dollars of insurance, uh, life insurance, because Larry was getting married. And this is step one to sorting out your human insurance, deciding what insurances you need and then how much cover you want. Cool. So... What's the next step? Well, you probably have insurance inside your superannuation. So that's a great place to start. Check out your statement, log in online, see what cover you have and what you're paying. We create something like this for clients, which you're welcome to steal. Uh, make a little Excel document and record your current cover, your current cost, what cover you want, how much it would be if you increased your cover with your current super fund, um, but then also do quotes and see how much it would cost if you got insurance elsewhere. Okay, a few things to note here. You should be able to get insurance quotes from your industry fund on their website. You may run into some questions or terms that you're unsure about. Uh, in the next part of this video, I'll explain some of the common ones so that may help with that process. What if you have two superannuation accounts? Often this can be a really good way for you to decide which fund to go with. Um, superannuation fees and account fees don't really change that much, but insurance premiums can be wildly different. So this exercise can save you a bit of money. Um, so just you know, compare super fund one and what their insurance would cost, super fund two and what their, their insurance would cost. And if there's a big difference, that's probably gonna sway you one way or the other. Another thing is most people don't know that you can get insurance from uh, an alternate insurance company without changing your super fund. Say you're with Host Plus, you can cancel your insurance with Host Plus, set up a insurance with, let's call it Super Company X, um, and you can tell them to take your premiums from your Host Plus account. This is called retail insurance. So, why would you go to the effort of getting retail cover? Firstly, cost is a big one. 
If you get retail cover, they will ask you more questions about you and your life and they'll get to know you better so they can potentially offer you lower rates. In this example, I compared a low risk office professional non-smoker at the age of 40 and the retail cover came out 40% cheaper. The other reason to switch is features. As you can see at the rating at the bottom of this by a company called Omnium, Host Plus is rated 38 out of 100 and the retail fund is 71 out of 100. So for this last section of this video, I thought I'd try and quickly explain insurance terminology, features, like the differences between um, these different scores and hopefully help you navigate your insurance journey further. Stepped versus level. These insurances are often stepped in nature. And what that means is that every year as your age goes up, so do the premiums, like the steps of a ladder. Retail insurance providers will give you an option called level premiums, which means they won't go up every year, they stay flat. Um, however, they are more expensive in the short term and they're cheaper if the, the longer you hold them. So after 10, 12 years, you really start seeing that benefit and the longer you hold them, the greater the benefit. International claims. Another interesting uh, clause is your ability to claim while you're overseas. Uh, like our boys in Thailand, a low rated insurance policy may not pay out while the person um, is overseas. You have to wait until they come back to Australia and see an Australian doctor. Um, however, you know if you break your back, you could be stuck in a hospital for months. If you're a traveler, this is something to check. Unitized versus fixed cover. It's common for industry funds to use the unitized cover. And what that means is they don't give you $300,000 worth of life cover. They give you a set number of units. Then as you get older, the value and the cost of those units change. Generally speaking, the value of the unit comes down and the costs go up. So you could have a million dollars worth of cover today, but then in five years time, you can only have $800,000 of cover, you know? So it's something to keep an eye on. Inside versus outside super. We've talked a lot about insurance inside super. However, you can get these insurances outside super or you can get a hybrid policy where there are a bit of both. Outside super policies generally have more features, except you've got to pay for them out of your pocket. If you're serious about getting your insurance sorted, talk to a financial advisor. Um, we can really help get the right balance between cost, features, inside versus outside super. Tax deductibility. Income protection often is the first policy someone considers owning outside super as you can potentially claim these premiums as a tax deduction. Your beneficiary. If you are going to the effort to sort out your insurance, go that next step and get your beneficiary in place. Talk to your fund or your advisor about a binding nomination, um, putting that in place so that if you do pass away, your insurance will go to the right people at the quickest possible time frame. Trauma or crisis cover. There is actually a fourth kind of insurance I haven't mentioned in this video called trauma cover. This is a lump sum payment in the event of major illness, uh, heart attack, cancer, stroke. It is something I recommend to clients, but it's something you really do want to talk to an advisor about. And lastly, some warnings. Cancelled cover. Insurance you have in super can get cancelled if you stop making contributions. So if you change jobs and then you change funds and your old fund isn't getting your contributions, they may get cancelled on you. Medical issues. If you have any medical issues, you need to tread carefully. This could be anything from major health issues, past inju injuries, um, a high BMI, mental health conditions. You know, if you go and apply to your current fund to get an insurance increase, you may be declined. As advisors, we do something called a pre-assessment. So we go to a number of different insurance companies and see who will give us the best terms or conditions based on, um, you know, you as a person. This can save a lot of time and the risk of having a decline on your record. Super consolidation. We often hear that having one super fund is the way to go and people often just pick one of their funds randomly and roll everything into the one. Well, what if you do have health issues and you can't get any additional insurance? Well, in that case, sometimes having you know three super funds, each with a little bit of insurance is the best case scenario. 
This is why you need to be careful and do any rollovers to funds um, after you've sorted out your insurance. If you are in this situation, talk to us uh, as we can um, sometimes merge a bunch of insurance policies together. So you can actually have one super fund without having to apply for any other insurance. Car yard insurance. If you've ever gone to get a loan from a car yard, they will try and sell you life, TPD, and income protection on the loan. Now, I am not supposed to give direct advice like this, but I don't care. Do not buy it. They are usually, not exaggerating, a thousand percent more expensive. The government smart money website even has a page dedicated to these insurances being poor value. Buyer beware. Okay, so that is insurance 101. I know I just fired a lot of information at you and I hope I haven't scared you off sorting out your insurance. Truth be told, most people don't sort out this by themselves. They talk to a financial advisor to get a recommendation and have their advisor set it up for them. Um, but as it, it is still important for you to know and understand this information, you know, at a base level. So, you know, you at least know which questions to ask and what things to look for. If you do want help, please don't be afraid to reach out. There are links uh, to book a meeting on our website and until you sort out your insurance, and well, even after you do, please make sure you wear a seatbelt.